I'm Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. I'm Matt Duchesne of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. I'm Ryan Johansson of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia. And before we get started on the No Half Step in Hockey coverage, let me please introduce you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go there, you can learn everything you need to know about the show. And once you get all educated about the show, you can click on that merchandise tab. And that's really where we get down to business. That's where you find our Pride logo t-shirt, our Classic logo t-shirt, and all of the other different special event t-shirts that we have. But don't worry, all the gimmicks you've come to know and love from the Renegades of Puck are still there in the store. Socks, throw pillows, wall art, bed sets. It's all in the store. You can outfit your entire home or outfit your entire body. And please, we advocate that you do so. We've sold out so that you can buy it. Stick taps to each and every one of you who's picked up some merchandise here over the holiday season. Social media is of critical importance here to this operation, and you can help us out by going to any one of the following social media platforms and giving us a like, giving us a follow, giving us a subscription, please. It doesn't cost you a penny, and it doesn't take you but a second to do, but it sure does go. A long way to helping out here in the trenches. We are on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. We are also on YouTube. We are also on Stitcher and Spotify and Google Podcasts. You can find us on a myriad of different platforms. Basically, if you want to say it the easiest way, you can find us everywhere. Now, we just need the support everywhere. Thank you so much. Stick taps to each and every one of you. Venmo is how you can become a partner or a sponsor of the Renegades of Puck. And we cannot thank the generous Renegades like you enough for what you have done to help us out over the past year. We have upgraded everything here in the bunker and we have ambitions going into 2023 for some other projects. So please continue donating. Anything goes a long way to helping. Even a dollar goes a long way to helping an operation that is 100% funded by Renegades just like you thank you so much stick taps love and respect it means the world to have your support now let's get to the no half step in hockey coverage it's time for operation number 691 for the renegades puck that is right it's time for show number 691 for the renegades of puck and at this moment in hockey history the national Predators currently find themselves in sixth place in the central division 31 games played they have a record of 14 13 and 4 one game back over 500 32 points has them 12 points out of first place behind the Dallas Stars, 11 points behind the second place Winnipeg Jets, 8 points behind the third place Minnesota Wild, and 6 points behind the National Predators' next opponent, the Colorado Avalanche. The Avalanche have a record of 18-11-2 after 31 games played. Those 38 points have them 6 points ahead of the Nashville Predators. The Avalanche are 5 points ahead of St. Louis, and then the Predators are at 32 points right there. The bottom division is Arizona and Chicago. So so this is the battle of fourth place and sixth place in the Central Division. It will take place at Bridgestone Arena, where the National Predators have a record of 8-5-2 and two on the road. The Colorado Avalanche have a record of 9-6-0. and oh. Now, when it comes to scoring, the goal differential between these two teams is not as wide as you might normally think when it comes to the Colorado Avalanche and their high-powered offense. 93 goals on the season is good, but it is by no means anywhere near the top of the Central Division. As a matter of fact, it ranks fifth in the Central Division in goals for. They've given up 82 against. They are still plus 11 in goal differential. So this Colorado Avalanche team is a substantially better defensive team than they are offensive team this year finding different ways to win is truly the make of a championship team they've already won one and right now they are currently in fourth place which would be a playoff spot so the Nashville Predators have scored 80 goals on the season 13 less than the Colorado Avalanche while they have given up 13 more on the season given up 95 goal differential of minus 15 on the year these two teams have already met two times this would have been the fourth and final meeting of the regular season between these two central division rivals but because of the water main break reschedule one of the games the game that is still to come in this series after game three will not take place until April the 14th. Originally, the season would have been over by that point, but the reschedule takes this game all the way to April the 14th. Now, they've played two times before this. Call all the way back to November the 10th. National Prayers fell in Denver, Colorado, 5-3. to three. Ranton and terrorized the Preds for two goals and assists, three total points. O'Connor had two goals as well. Tolvanen, Johansson, and Yossi were your goal scorers for the Nashville Predators. Well, at least one of those won't be scoring for the Preds again. Lankinen was 30 out of 35, took the loss for the Nashville Predators. They met again on the 17th of 
December. That's pretty fresh in your mind. It was a 3-1 to one victory by Colorado in Colorado. Ranton in with another goal against Nashville. Purs new hook scored a goal. Matt Duchesne had the Nashville Purs only goal in that game. UC Saros took the loss 27 out of 29, but he looked respectable. The Nashville Predators and the Colorado Avalanche again will not meet again until April the 14th. That is the final game of the regular season for the Nashville Predators. So the Preds are 0 for 4 on points against the Colorado Avalanche. They've been outscored 8 to 4 in the season series at this point. Once the Preds wrap up this game against the Colorado Avalanche, it will be time for the Christmas break. They will not play again until Tuesday when they will welcome in the first place in the Central Division, Dallas Stars, then back out on the road immediately December the 30th at Anaheim. Follow that up the next night on New Year's Eve in Vegas against the Golden Knights. That will wrap up the 2022 schedule for the calendar year for the Nashville Purs starting 2023 on the 3rd of January versus the Montreal Canadiens at Bridgestone Arena. And then on the 5th, heading out on the road in Carolina to take on the Hurricanes. Now, for the Nashville Purs taking on the Colorado Avalanche, we'll take a look inside the rankings and how they match up. But first, let's take a look back at the most recent stretch of action for the Colorado Avalanche, the most recent five games. On December the 13th, with a 3-2 victory versus the Philadelphia Flyers on the 15th, a 4-2 loss versus the Buffalo Sabres. On the 17th, a 3-1 win versus these Nashville Predators. On the 19th of December, a 1-0 shootout win versus the New York Islanders and on the 21st of December a 2 to 1 overtime win versus the Montreal Canadiens the only loss in the last 5 was against the Buffalo Sabres and the Buffalo Sabres are a much better team than you might be thinking you should probably watch a little bit more Eastern Conference hockey maybe we all should NHL ranks between these two teams it might be quite surprising to find out some of the more impressive metrics for the Colorado Avalanche this season are on the defensive side of things and I'll start by telling you that their goals for is much lower than anticipated expected 2.90 on the season is 25th in the nhl it is just ahead of the nashville Predators at 2.52 which is rated 29th in the nhl now goals against this is where things start to really stand out sixth best in the nhl the colorado avalanche are only giving up 2.61 goals against per game while the national Predators are giving up 3.03 per game that is 16th overall in the league shots on net generating 33.2 per game that is seventh best in the nhl for colorado while the preds are generating 30 30.1 on net per game. That is 21st best in the NHL. In the shots against category, the Preds are giving up 27th overall in the league. 33.3 against their own net, while Colorado is giving up 31.7 against. That's 16th best in the NHL. Now, with such high skill individuals and forwards and defensemen and everyone on the Colorado Avalanche, it's no surprise to see that their power play is ranked 5th overall in the NHL. They've converted 29 out of 105 times. 27.6% is their conversion rate, while the Nashville Predators are quite the opposite. 29 in the NHL. That's three spots from the very bottom. They've only converted 17 out of 108 opportunities. That makes 15.7%. And on the penalty kill, the Nashville Predators rated 21st in the NHL, 76.9%. 25 power play goals against the Colorado Avalanche have the 19th best power play overall in the NHL. They have given up 23 power play goals against. For the Nashville Predators, Borowiecki, the only player listed on injured reserve at this time. So the Nashville Predators were hemorrhaging when it came to the defense core and now getting a lot of bodies back in the lineup and the defense core playing much more elevated hockey as of late. This is tremendous news for the Nashville Predators, for Mark Borowiecki. I sure hope he can get back in the lineup. I'm just not sure that we're going to see him back in the lineup with the significant issues that he has developed over the last couple of years with injuries and it's been quite some time since we've even heard an update on him. But Mark Borowiecki, the only player for the National Purse listed on the injured list at this time. Individual stats on these two clubs, compare and contrast, there's really no way. Even with Colorado Avalanche having an offensively depressed season for them, it's an offensively depressed season. Still, they would have three players that would be leading the National Purse in scoring. So let's go down the list. Ranton, who always terrorizes the National Purse, 22 goals on the season, very impressive number 18 assist 40 overall points he is a well-balanced player and he often feasts against the national players just like this next guy mckinnon 8 and 26 for 34 mccarr 7 and 22 for 29 out there on the blue line lekin in nine goals 13 assists for 22 points on the season and taves 2 and 16 for 18 points another defenseman there in the top five scoring 
for the Abs. Georgiev in net 14, 6, and 2 in his first season as a Colorado Avalanche starting goaltender. 9, 24 save percentage, 2.39 goals against average. And so far, absolutely standing up to the test of moving from backup goaltender with the New York Rangers to starting goaltender with the Colorado Avalanche. One of the reasons they've been so good defensively is because of his incredibly solid play. There are a number of incredibly talented young goaltenders in the NHL right now. This game will feature two of them in Georgiev and UC Soros. Let's just start with UC Soros since we're talking goaltenders. His record's 11-9-4, a save percentage of 9-1-3, and it goes against average of 281. Those numbers are all looking significantly more impressive than they were. For a stretch of time there, UC Soros had save percentage well down in the eights, goals against well over three, and the record now looking better and better, 11-9-4. That is a good, good stat line for the starting netminder of the Nashville Predators. Remember, they only have 14 victories on the season. The starting goaltender for the Preds has 11 of those. Now, the leading scorers for the Nashville Predators, Forsberg's got nine goals and 16 assists for 25 points. Matt Duchesne has nine goals and 16 assists for 25 points. And remember, that's something they did a lot last year. They mirrored each other in statistics throughout much of the year. You would like to see a significant bump in the upward transition of these statistics. But right now, 25 points apiece for piece for them. And Roman Yossi also with 25 points, 7 goals, 18 assists. Mikhail Granlund, 4 goals and 16 assists for 20 points. And Ryan Johansson, 8 goals and 19 assists for 17 points. Nino Niederreiter, just mentioned him, 11 goals on the season. That leads the team in total goals. That gets you all set up for the National Predators and the Colorado Avalanche. Fresh in your minds, the Preds just played the Avs and dropped one to them back on the 17th. They'll have another opportunity right here. It's the third of four meetings on regular season between these Central Division rivals. The Preds now losing 6 in a row to the Colorado Avalanche. They need to turn things around and keep the momentum going of this recent two-game winning streak. We'll break that down. We'll talk about it more, and we'll get the running gates of Puck in the Trenches coming up next. Rebirth Sports. Check out their work. RebirthSports.com or find them on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Very easy to find them. They're very interactive, very good people, and I certainly love having a partnership with that crew. You see me wearing the running gates of Puck home jersey right here in the bunker. You see me wearing the road jersey, the third jersey. Just last night, skating with the Mighty Drunks here in Middle Tennessee in the Middle C Division. Got a chance to pull on the red, white, and blue Rebirth Sports Mighty Drunks jersey. Good looking threads out there at the rink. Got asked multiple times, where did that jersey come from? And I had to tell them, of course, because I love having the conversation. Came from Rebirth Sports. Sure to appreciate them. They take visions, make them reality, and they are certainly not jersey makers. They are hockey tailors. So check out their work, rebirthsports.com. We go all the way back to December the 21st of the year 2022, and John Hines deployed his lines in the following way. Forsberg, Novak, and Granlin make up your new first line. Need a rider glass and Geno make up yet another combination of the line. Trenton, Johansson, and Duchesne, Smith, Parson, and Sissons make up your fourth line. Your defensive pairings. Good to see Ryan McDonough back in the lineup off of the injury list. He'll be wearing the full cage for now, but it's great to see him back on the ice. He'll be paired up with the captain, Roman Yossi. Ekholm and Carrier make up your second pair, Luzon and Fabro back to being the third pair so this really balances back out the defensive pairings quite nicely for the national pairs and they were having some success with these defensive pairings before all the injuries happened UC Soros gets the start in net. We'll take it to 142 of the first period on the clean sheet here at Bridgestone Arena. And as Philip Forsberg hitting the post, Dante Fabro follows up, and he has to be stopped by Morazic. Another shot would be followed up, and the National Purse would have a really good offensive burst here at the opening of the game. 538 of the first period, UC Soros comes up with the save on after the CU. Right around the seven minute mark, Duchesne hits the iron off of the Russian 923. That's where we find Nino Niederreiter getting his 11th goal. The season team leading for the National Predators, giving the Preds a 1-0 lead over the Chicago Blackhawks. It was a wrist shot from the circle off of glasses. Really great feed. Niederreiter right there in a high danger area, and he is converting. 9.54 of the first period. Janot is off the box. Four minutes for high sticking. Honestly, this could have been a five. It wouldn't have made a difference, though, as Saros only has to come up with a save on Kane's one-timer, but it was an easy-to-stop one-timer as it was a well-telegraphed and well easy to see 
play right here. Strong PK overall by the Nashville Purse. Things were kept to the outside, and Chicago would only generate two total shots on net. 15-19 up the first period. Razzle comes with a save on Forsberg's heavy wrist shot. A boomer off the pads. 16-1 of the first. Sars comes with a save on Domi with the shoulder and puts that puck out of the dangerous area at 17-45. Niederreiter is stopped at close range by Mrazek. Glass with another incredible setup here early in this game. We go to the end of the first period. The Preds are being outshot by the Blackhawks 10-8. to eight. It takes a little while to get the second period action rolling with a 342. Mrazek comes up with his first save. That's going to be on Yossi from close range. 413. Sars comes up and finds the loose puck before anyone else can. It was a mad scramble and the netminder for the National Predators was able to corral that loose puck and get the whistle. 735 of the second period. Yossi's off the puck. Minutes for holding strong PK by the Nashville Predators. 1044 of the second. Forsberg's shot goes just wide. A really glorious scoring opportunity by the Predators right here at 1219 in the second. UC Sars with the save on Kane. 13-9. Trenton misses the net on a breakaway. He had so much time and space. He even had a chance to look behind him, slow down, think about what he wanted to do, and then he completely missed the net. I mean, honestly, it's completely unacceptable, but we're going to move on from that. 15-52, Kane has a backhand, and it's hitting the post, but the Chicago Blackhawks are going to continue buzzing after that, and they're going to follow up, and just 11 seconds later at 16:03, Murphy's third goal of the season is going to tie this game up at one apiece. It was a long shot, and Kane, after hitting the post, went behind the net, kept the play alive, then goes right to the high danger area to the top of the crease, sets a nice screen, and allows Murphy to convert, tying the game up at one apiece. Before I could finish writing that, noted 16:40 of the second period, Entwistle has his second goal of the season, Chicago has their second goal of the game, and the Blackhawks, just like that, are leading 2-1. to one. It, This puck goes off of Luzon, and it knuckle pucks over the shoulder of UC Saros. Truly a bizarre-looking goal in every way. Again, off of the Nashville Predators defender and into the net. 2-1 to one in favor of Chicago. 17-59 of the second period. Mrazek comes up with a save on Tommy Novak. 19-33. Saros comes up with a save on Dickinson. And just before the end of the period, 19-55, Matt Duchesne's ninth goal of the season ties the game up at two apiece. Matthias Ekholm really is the player who deserves all of the credit for this one. He carried the puck over the blue line and makes a diagonal pass from the wall all the way to the back post, and Matt Duchesne tips that puck into the net. His ninth goal of the season tie game at the end of the second period. Chicago is out shooting Nashville 23-21. to Chicago with 13 shots on goal in the second period. We're into the third period of a brand new hockey game. 20 minutes to determine a winner. 103 into the third period. Mrazek comes up with a save on Yossi but at 127, Yossi was buzzing all over the place on this shift and he continued doing so. Now scoring his seventh goal of the season, he steps out from below the goal line and he roofs the puck for point number 566 significance. He ties the all-time franchise record for points with 566, tying David Legwand. Also gives his team, the National Purse, a 3-2 to two lead in the third period with his seventh goal of the season. A really insanely good shift by the captain UC Saros right here kept the offense alive and kept the offense generating and plugging along until finally finishing the play on his own. 342 in the third period. Saros comes with a save on Kane at the back door off of the rush. Great scoring opportunity by Chicago. Even better save by UC Saros. 354. Saros comes with another save on Kane. 505. Saros comes with a save on Jones. The puck trickled through and was sliding towards the post. The emergency dive slash cover while on his back gets a little bit of help from some of his teammates right here. A really scary puck, though. It was definitely in the dangerous areas. UC Saros gets a save here in the scramble. 6.03. Domi's off to the box. Minutes for interference, and Tommy Novak is converting on the power play for the Nashville Preds. His first goal of the season gives the Preds a 4-2 to two lead. It was a wrist shot from the circle off of Yossi's feed, and that means Point number 567 for the captain, Roman Yossi. He now stands alone in first place as the all-time leader in points for the Nashville Predators franchise. He gets the primary assist, point number 567. Tommy Novak gets his first goal of the season. The Preds move up by two. They get a little bit of a cushion, so they go from down by one with just five seconds to go in the second period to suddenly up by two, six minutes into the third period. Seems like they got their stuff together. We move on. 
4-2 in favor of the National Predators at 732. Glass is off to the box. Two minutes for tripping. This looked like it could have been a little bit of an embellishment, a little bit of a dive, but Glass ends up the victim and finds himself in the box. Strong pressure by Chicago for almost the entirety of the two minutes, but Colton Sisson's determination block shots. Zone clear finally at the end is what allows the Nashville Predators to have a bend and not break scenario. At 12.03, UC Saros comes up with a save on Radish at 12.20. Mrazek, he's off to the box. Two minutes for tripping. He won and lost the race to the loose puck on Niederreiter. Niederreiter got there and was trying to drag the puck around Mrazek. Mrazek goes ahead and trips him up. Off to the box two minutes, but he would not actually go to the box. Somebody would serve for him. Mrazek would still be on the ice and then would come up with a save on Parsonin's one-timer. And while the National Predators would have intense possession in zone time, they would be unable to convert on this power play. 18-29 of the third period. Kane hits the crossbar in 1959. UC Saros comes up with one final save on this game. We hit the buzzer, and the Nashville Predators end up winning this game 4-2 over the Chicago Blackhawks. They outshoot Chicago 39-37. to So the Nashville Predators go on the road, and they did not have a winning record on the road. They went in with 5-8-2 record on the road. They come away with their sixth road victory of the season, and they did what they had to do. They beat a team that is below them in the standings, and they beat a team that is on a terrible losing streak, and they beat a team that they needed to beat. Now, coming off of that lengthy losing streak for the Nashville Predators, they've won two in a row, and things feel a little bit better now. A very difficult game coming up against the Colorado Avalanche at Bridgestone Arena, but the Christmas break awaits after that, and for the Nashville Predators, they have gotten better performances against the Avs these last couple of games. Maybe this is the game where they break through. Take the momentum from here. Take Matt Duchesne being more hot and efficient on the offensive side of things, and take some of what's going on with the Nashville Predators team and beat the Colorado Avalanche and go into the Christmas break with a little bit of momentum. If not, you're going to be back at 500 going into the Christmas break, 32 games into the season. That gets you all caught up on everything that happened, all the significance, all the big plays. You give me 10 minutes, I'll give you the game right here on Renegades of Puck TV and the Renegades of Puck podcast. That was the Rebirth Sports full game recap. Nashville Predators at the Chicago Blackhawks. Preds come away with the big victory, 4-2. to two. Strong Style Fitness is a great partner here of the Renegades of Puck, and we love our partners. Strong Style Fitness can be found online, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Instagram is their preferred method of communication when it comes to social media. StrongStyleFit.com is where you can find the website. 150 workouts by a certified personal trainer, completely free to each and every one of the Renegades of Puck. Just go to YouTube and search Strong Style Fit, and you'll be able to find those, whether it's your first step off the couch, your first workout, or you've been at it for years. Tracy has a workout that is designed and dedicated to each and every one of you out there. She just wants to get you moving and get you motivated and keep you healthy. She has provided all of these workouts on her YouTube channel completely for free. So Renegades of Puck in a world that has become increasingly more expensive every day, take advantage of an opportunity to have the Renegades of Puck personal trainer at Strong Style Fitness. Great partner here of the show. About an hour before Puck drop in the Chicago Blackhawks versus Nashville Predators game, had a chance to work out with Strong Style Fit. Got an incredible upper body workout. I've experienced the results. I know the results, and you'll see the results too. What a great partner we have here in the trenches. So looking forward to them getting some new content out so we can go ahead and tell you all about that. UC Saros, 37 out of 39 in this game. Uh, basically two fluky goals against a strong performance, and the numbers continue going up again. We've chronicled over and over and over again because we do that here. That's what we do every show every game, every episode, we talk about the numbers. UC Saros' numbers, he has a winning record. His save percentage is dramatically up from where it was. His goals against average is down from where it was. So UC Saros continues trending in the right direction. I felt that he had a strong performance in this game. Patrick Kane and UC Saros have had a long history against each other now, and he usually finds success against the Nashville Predators. Not tonight, though. A couple of posts prevented that from happening. So UC Saros, I felt like, had to get another strong game and continues building a very, very strong resume for the month of December in total. I cannot wait to see what the numbers equal out to be for the month, but I thought another strong game for UC Soros. Matt Duchesne, third game in a row with a goal, and again, 
going to the hard areas this time receiving an absolutely sick and perfect pass from Matias Ekholm but you know what Matt Duchesne going to the right place going to the hard area going there with confidence determination and absolutely going there with speed he was there for the connection of that perfect pass at just the right time and that's three goals in three games all from within a couple of feet this one being the closest of the three but all from right around the low slot low face-off circle area and this is good news for the Nashville Prayers Matt Duchesne now three goals in the last three games now nine goals in the season he was sitting on six so three he's equaled half of his season production in the last three games this is great news for the Nashville Prayers if Matt Duchesne starts to take off other forwards around him will start to take off he will have a drag effect on them in a positive way I mean pulling them forward now Tommy Novak's first goal Man, I thought last year Tommy Novak had all of the intangibles to make it and stick around for the season. And then all of a sudden, poof, it was the curious case of Tommy Novak and he was just gone. And for some reason, he never really came up in conversation. The National Prayers never really seemed to think of him as an option. Now, Tommy Novak gets the call up with this struggling offense. He was putting together a nice season in the AHL. Well, his first goal now for the Nashville Predators. And he's been very noticeable in the two games since he's been here thought it was worth having a short discussion about Tommy Novak. I hope he gets more minutes. I think he's earning more time out there. And this goal, of course, is going to go a long way uh, to helping that. So definitely wanted to make a point to talk about Tommy Novak on this broadcast. Niederreiter's 11th goal. Great to be able to talk about him again. He's still leading the team in goals. He's been leading the team in goals, but cooled off quite a bit. Was on a pace for a well over 30 goal season now. Cooled off a little bit. Still at 11 goals. Plenty of season to go, but definitely not on the toward pace that he was in the first say 15 games of the season or so but great to be able to talk about Niederreiter again it looks like Niederreiter getting an opportunity to go out there with Glass and Jano. Niederreiter and Glass seem to have a little bit of chemistry Glass in general deserves a little bit of stick taps and commentary right here too Glass looks like he is improving now shift by shift game by game ever since coming back into the lineup this is wonderful news for the Nashville Purse. Certainly out there working incredibly hard, making some great passes and being noticeable in all of the right ways. So Niederreiter, Glass, wanted to make sure brought that a Parson and two assists in this game, much the same way of Glass. Uh, Parson had kind of dipped a little bit there for a few games, still playing good hockey, but my God, look at the confidence he carries the puck with. Look at how he goes along the wall into the corners, into the hard areas, uses that big body, that big frame, builds a wall and moves the puck around the zone on the cycle. It is awesome to watch and to break down and to go back and, and really, really zero in on what he does on his shifts. He's getting more confident out there, and I, I don't know what happened, but his confidence seemed to take a hit for a little bit there, but it seems to be back right now. He's incredibly strong on the puck, and two assists tonight is clearly the reward uh, for how hard he is playing. And Ryan McDonough is back. That's great news for this National Purge. We talked about during the full game recap how that balances out the defensive pairings, how that resets them to where they were when they were having such success before the number of injuries Luzon Carey McDonough all happened in succession so great to have McDonough back he even gets on the score sheet with an assist in this game he's smooth 2049 time on ice and returning he's going to wear the full cage for a little while but it's not going to make any difference whatsoever what he does is absolutely great it's great to see that he's finally found his fit and his spot with his national purse team comes right back in goes right back to the top D pairing with Roman Yossi over 20 minutes that's awesome 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 to see and you got to talk about Roman Yossi I saved Roman Yossi for last for a reason because well he's he's the main event he's the highlight he's world class in every way and I'm going to talk more about that at the close of the episode but you got to talk about his performance in this game a goal and assist 567 points no not in this game that's asinine but for a career that makes him number one overall all time for the Nashville Predators franchise in scoring surpassing David Legwand I covered David Legwand I covered Roman Yossi, and I've covered every single one of these 560 points of Roman Yossi. I, all you can say is congratulations. He's otherworldly and world-class in each and every way. And for the Nashville Predators, he is the right man to lead this team. Two points tonight. He led his team in Chicago to a victory, and that's exactly what the Nashville Predators needed. Roman Yossi is truly world-class. I'm going to talk about Roman Yossi a lot more before the end of this show. You know who else is going to talk about Roman Yossi? Sean C. Smith. Of course, he is A to Z Sports. And you can find him on Twitter at SCSNSH. He's got the intel that you need to know, and he's in the trenches right now with the Renegades of Puck. Thanks, Charlie. Hey, Renegades, it's Sean Smith, and we're here to talk a little bit 
about this win against the Chicago Blackhawks. Now, what you saw in this game was the Predators playing what most people would agree is a pretty bad Blackhawks team. They don't have a lot going for them, a grand total of seven wins so far this season. And the big thing you wanted to see in a game like this is you wanted to see the Predators come out and assert themselves offensively. And here's the good news. The Predators won. Game was 4-2, to two, but you saw three big goals from three of your top-tier players, the guys getting paid the big bucks, the guys that you're paying to score goals. All got on the board. Now, other thing here that I think is very interesting is you're starting to see uh, surge here a little bit from some of these younger players that are getting a chance to play. Cody Glass is cooking. Yuso Parsonen had two points. And Tommy Novak, who's a call-up from Milwaukee, also scored a goal. And I want to talk about Novak a little bit. I, I wrote an article recently over at A to Z Sports saying that with McCarron out of the lineup, Novak was probably the most likely and also the best candidate for being called up. That's exactly what happened when they were able to Send those other defenders back down to Milwaukee. Novak comes up, plays two good games so far, and it looks like he might be here for a while. And I'm going to say this. Novak played in Nashville last season, 27 games, coming in after Cody Glass was sent down to the AHL early in the season. He stayed with the Predators, like I said, 27 games, and then got put on the COVID protocol. And once he came off the COVID protocol, he was sent back down to the AHL because in his absence... Michael McCarron stepped in and, and played on that fourth line as a center and, and did what Michael McCarron does and managed to hold on to that job. Now with McCarron gone, Novak, someone who's been doing very well down in the AHL, bringing him back up makes a lot of sense, and it's possible that he is reclaiming a spot that he feels was rightfully his, and he certainly seems to be earning it. You saw a lot of good playmaking passes from Novak. You saw a lot of good playmaking passes from Cody Glass. And you also saw a lot of good playmaking passes from Yuso Parsonen. These are young guys who have done their time in Milwaukee. Although Parsonen hasn't spent a ton of time there, but I'm going to tell you this organization is very high on Parsonen. And I think what, you, what you're seeing is you're starting to see the youth really come in and, and gain an identity for themselves. And on a team that likes to base itself on its identity and have an identity that everybody knows who they are when they play against them, these guys are coming in and making their own name on this team. And I think that's a good thing. I think it's exciting. I think it's what the team needs. As you definitely have those guys playing on the top lines, the big money guys who are coming in and needing to score the big goals, but you need to see these younger guys come in, start to get comfortable and start to make some plays and get involved in that offense that the team is so desperately lacking right now. You saw that, you saw solid defense, but you also saw, once again, an outstanding goaltending performance from UC Soros. And as long as Soros continues to put on performances like this, the Predators should always have a chance. It just depends on whether or not that offense shows up. Charlie, that's about all I've got for you today. Pretty exciting. Two wins in a row, one of them coming in regulation. Wow, it's a Christmas miracle. I'm going to send it back over to you. Stripe Digital Solutions is another great partner of the Renegades of Puck, and I sure do appreciate everything Stripe Digital Solutions does for us here in the trenches. Check out their work, stripedigitalsolutions.com, or online, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You see the crest that is on the jersey right here. You see the logo on the wall behind me, the website, renegadesofpuck.com, our social media and brand building plan. All of that is managed by and through Stripe Digital Solutions. We could not succeed on any level in the current world the way it functions without a strong digital partner and stripe digital solutions is the strongest digital partner i urge and encourage each and every one of you to reach out to brandy and start the conversation today i think that my website is fantastic my logos my graphics i think everything is wonderful and that is because i have visions and ideas and then they are whittled down by stripe digital solutions into something that actually is coherent and makes sense on the screen they do incredible work and i encourage each and every one of you check out stripe digital solutions today let's run down some numbers real quick your goal scorers for the nashville predators matt duchene need a rider and novak on the forward side of things on the defensive side of things roman yossi scores for the nashville Predators on the assist category two for parson leads the nashville predators also with assists in this game glass carrier 
Ekholm, Fabro, and Yossi, and McDonough. So five of the six defensemen pick up assists in this game. Roman Yossi also adds a goal. Luzon, the only defenseman for the Nashville Predators without a point, but he did have five shots on goal and definitely was a noticeable force out there in the lineup and also seems to be getting more confidence after coming back from his injury. So the defense core chipping in again on the scoring side of things for the second game in a row. When it comes to shots on goal, the captain Roman Yossi led with six blocked shots. Dante Fabro had three that was the most on the team in the hits category Tanner Janot was the physical force out there as he usually is six hits for this game Philip Forsberg had four in this game time on ice Mikhail Granlund 1656 in total time on ice for the forwards and listen to that 1656 an incredibly even distribution for the time on ice for the National Predators forwards tonight in Chicago John Hines did a great job of rolling all four of those lines on the road that's not always the easiest thing to do Alex Carey led the Nashville Predators defenseman and team in total time time on ice 22 13 that's right he actually had more minutes than the captain Romaniosi who had 22 01 McDonough I mentioned already back in the lineup for the first time 20 49 and total time on ice Soros 37 out of 39 he secures the victory and the Nashville Predators come out of this game with the two points let's hear from the man that really has the numbers he's got the charts you need to see the numbers you need to know from on the forecheck.com he's the one and only Brian Baston. Things looked bleak early, but the Nashville Predators managed to not buckle under pressure and was rewarded with another offensive outburst of four goals in a win against the Chicago Blackhawks 4-2. The Predators were able to give UC Soros his long-awaited goal support by not only getting a power play for the second game in a row, but also scoring four more goals for just the ninth time this season. That op- offense, plus a bonus stat, will be the topic of tonight's one big stat. Nashville was able to create 16 high-danger chances at all strengths tonight, giving them 29 in the last two games. But unlike a majority of the games during the last losing streak, both games saw Nashville have nine different players with at least one high-danger chance. In fact, Dante Fabro and Yakov Trenin had three high-danger chances each, and neither scored a goal. Not to be outdone, neither Novak or Niederreiter's goals were high-danger, making it 11 players who either scored a goal or got a high-danger shot on net. And you guess it, Nashville also had two goal scorers get tallies that weren't high-danger goals against Edmonton. The team has found offensive chemistry with the new lines that debuted against Edmonton. And even though those lines were met with much derision from Preds Twitter, it's hard to argue against these results against both a team they should beat in Chicago and a team they usually can't beat in Edmonton. And of course, I mentioned a bonus stat. My good buddy Willie Donick mentioned tonight on the broadcast that Tommy Novak scored his first career goal against Chicago almost exactly a year ago as the game winner in overtime. But did you know that he's the 10th Predator to notch their first career NHL goal against the Hawks? In fact, half of them happened in the last five years. But let's start from the beginning. Patrick Kelberg had the first way back in October 1998, followed by Vernon Fiddler in 2002. Ryan Suter in 2005, Kevin Klein in 2007, and Kevin Henderson in 2013. Then came the rush in the last half decade. Ellie Tolvenin, we miss you, in December 2018, and Dante Fabro just five months later, both got their first goals against Chicago in Bridgestone Arena against Cam Ward. Of course, we mentioned Novak last year, but Colin Blackwell got his first career goal on January 9th, 2020, but it'll be nearly impossible for most fans to remember that, since that was John Hines' first game as head coach, and oh yeah, the 10th player to get his first career goal, Pecorine, scored in that game. Another fun fact about Ryan Suter's first career goal, the winning goaltender for the Predators, our good friend Chris Mason. And that's tonight's One Big Stat. Back to you, Charlie. I'm Crazy Charlie Sarnier, captain of the Renegades of Puck. I'm also tired of the cold, tired of the dark, and tired of being landlocked. I'm also willing to bet that I'm not the only one who could use some sun, fun, and time in paradise with friends. That's exactly why I called our great friend Pete Weber. He told me, call ships and trips travel, and now we're all going to Mexico. That's right, Renegades of Puck, July 15th to the 20th of 2023. Dreams Vallarta Resort in Puerto Vallarta is the destination to hang with Pete Weber in paradise. To join Pete and the Renegades of Puck in Puerto Vallarta, go to www.shipsandtripstravel.com. That's shipsandtripstravel.com. And just click on the ROP on vacation tab. Don't stay landlocked. Join the Renegades of Puck in paradise, July 15th to the 20th, 2023 in Puerto Vallarta. Pete Weber, the Renegades of Puck, and you. It's time to ditch those skates for flip-flops and fun in the sun.
And to close this show, it's very simple. The Nashville Predators defeated a team below them in the standings, a team that they should have won, and they went in and they handled that business. Yes, they gave up two goals. They were behind, heading towards the end of the second period. But a good team can rally, can recover from that, and can go ahead and put up three goals like the Nashville Predators did, come from behind, secure the victory, and get out of that road game with the two points. It was business, and that's exactly what the Nashville Predators were able to do and conduct, and that's great news because they haven't necessarily been able to do that against teams that are below them in the standings, and there aren't a whole lot of teams that are below them in the standings. Now, for a close that is absolutely a true delight, the captain, Roman Yossi, of the Nashville Predators. He now has 567 points. He's past David Leguan. Philip Forsberg is third all time on the franchise in scoring, so still active. So Roman Yossi will hold that record for quite some time. Philip Forsberg may make a run at it someday. Other than that, there are no other Nashville Predators anywhere on the horizon. For a defenseman to lead this franchise in scoring is no surprise. Long since this franchise has existed, they have had a tower of power out there on the blue line. It has been a source of their historical greatness. If there has been greatness for this franchise, the defense core has been where the offense has been generated. You can go back throughout the history of this Nashville Predators team, whether it was Zidlitsky, whether it was Suter, whether it was Shea Weber, and now, of course, Roman Yossi in this particular era and this generation. It is no surprise that a defenseman leads this Nashville Predators team in scoring all time. The forwards over the years, frankly, have been depressed. The National Predators have never had a 100-point score. Their all-time franchise leader for a single season is a defenseman in Roman Yossi. Only one player, Roman Yossi, has eclipsed 90 points in a season. I've covered every single point that Roman Yossi has scored. I've covered every game that Roman Yossi has skated in. I met Roman Yossi when he was first drafted by the Nashville Predators. He had an arm injury. His arm was in a sling and over at Centennial Sportsplex. He was standing off to the side just observing practice. Had a chance to hang out with Roman Yossi, talk to him a little bit, get to know him just a little bit before he got healthy, got out on the ice and started to reveal himself as the otherworldly hockey player that we all know today. Covering Roman Yossi has been a delight. You hear him doing the sound bite and the drop, as it's called in the radio business, at the open of this show. Roman Yossi was more than happy to record that for the running gates of Puck, and he was always easy to work with whenever I had the opportunities to go into the locker room or whenever I was working as an active media member there on site with the Nashville Predators. The captain, Roman Yossi, is world class in each and every single way. The Nashville Predators are lucky to have a player of his ability, his skill, and of his everything he brings it all to the table. He's the right captain for this Nashville Predators team, and it truly, truly has been a joy. Congratulations to Roman Yossi for becoming the all-time franchise leader in points. It truly has been impressive. I look forward to covering all the rest of your points, the rest of your career, and then I'll probably be there at your statue unveiling someday. I've covered every single game that Pecorine played. I'll cover every game that Roman Yossi plays. The two best players in franchise history and the Renegades of Puck have been there to witness every single moment. For Sean C. Smith, for Brian Bassett, and for each and every one of the Renegades of Puck, we show sure to appreciate each and every one of you for taking your time, and we just appreciate you.